Hey, how's everybody doing today? Welcome to another episode of Cooking with Chef Johnny Schwa, Sour John's. Uh, we have a really great recipe to, uh, for you today. Um, we have a chicken in a green sauce, and we're going to be using tomatillos, some tomatoes, little cherry tomatoes. These were going to go bad in the refrigerator, so we're going to use these. And then I have some diced tomatoes and shallots, and I have some whole garlic. Um, you know, we had someone take some chicken out probably around 10, 30, 11 today, but still a little frozen. Um, and it's okay, it's gonna work out. You know, you don't fully have to wait for your chicken to be thawed out. Um, as long as it's been out for a little while and you are taking your time, uh, not trying to rush this on a very high heat, uh, you're gonna find that you know, chicken that's a little bit frozen, or maybe a little bit more than frozen, is gonna work out pretty well for you. Okay, uh, and then we also have some chicken stock. Um, this was uh, some wing tips uh, that we were cleaning. We had a lot of them, and we added those to a pot, made a stock. Um, the wing tips are really small, so only about two or three hours, and I just added a little bit of onion in here. I didn't even put any celery or carrots, so um, I didn't really put a full mirepoix. I'm gonna go ahead and get my stove on. Um, our stove was clean today, so sometimes, it can be a little more challenging to turn on. All right, so we have our, our stove on, and we want to go ahead and we're going to add our tomatillos, no oil, no salt and pepper, and we're going to get those right into the pan. And what we're going to try and do is actually char and burn um, the bottom of the tomatillo. Uh, we're going to blister the tomatoes and even get the, um, the garlic nice and charred. Uh, now, you might be asking, well, why would you want to burn your food? Well, when you start to use the browning, caramelization, and burn burning, it actually gives you balance and flavor. So in our tomatillos, uh, it can be very sour, uh, not very sweet, and just, you know, tons of, of flavor. We want to be able to balance that out. And the char uh, is going to bring uh, some depth of flavor into the tomatillos. It's going to help to give our sauce this really nice color and it's gonna taste amazing so I'm gonna get all my tom tomatillos I cut my tomatillos in half I took the outside skin uh, that shell off and um, again not any any oil or, or salt and pepper now you might be asking well why aren't you adding any oil I do not want these to fry if I put oil with them they would begin to fry and what I'm doing is not only adding uh, that browning uh, but I'm going to be evaporating a lot of moisture. And once we get a, rid of a lot of moisture, we can intensify our flavors. Okay? So, uh, we have this on. I can see a lot of steam already coming off of my pan. You know, I had a really great day the past couple of days. I was in New York City, and I went to uh, the restaurant show uh, in New York City, and it was just amazing. Uh, talk about being inspired. Talk about... Um, you know, networking and meeting with mushroom farms and, uh, you know, linen supply for jackets and, and, and aprons for school and uh, talking to Ecolab about chemicals and dishwashers and just meeting so many people and doing so many things. Um, I really had uh, a great, great time. Uh, drank lots of tea, drank lots of coffee. Uh, they were all coffee and tea vendors were there. Um, and went to a lot of uh, lectures. Uh, lectures about mindfulness, lectures about collaborative group work. Um, it was just an amazing time. Uh, the garlic I'm gonna go ahead and put in the middle. Um, I know you can, can't see from back there, but we have our tomatillos in the pan, and I have those directly over the flame, and I'm gonna put the garlic and the tomatoes um, in that middle part. Uh, so they're just a little bit more, um, a little more tender when we get this going. Uh, we're going to get this to a nice char on all sides, and then we're going to be adding it into the pot with some chicken stock, and we're going to puree that, and that's going to be our salsa verde, okay? Now, what are we going to do with our salsa verde? Well, we're going to be um, broiling some chicken. Uh, this works really well with chicken legs or chicken thighs. Um, I like to use it with the chicken thighs. It gets to cook a little bit longer, um, and it gets to be a little more develop development of flavor. And then I'm going to be serving this over rice peel off. Uh, I'm just going to do the assembly today of our, our chicken and our salsa verde. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I'm going to grab my, um, my, my salt cave, where we keep all of our salt hiding in the cave. 
Uh, hands were washed after putting the chicken onto the tray, right, to avoid cross-contamination. Uh, you want to make sure when seasoning, you know, seasoning happens nice and high. Seasoning should fall onto food like snow. Like when, when it snows outside and it falls on the ground, well, it's not just falling in certain areas, it's covering the whole ground completely. And that's really what we want. So I'm gonna get this up nice and high. Season up nice and high. And you wanna make sure you season a nice coating. You know, depending how much black pepper you like uh, will depend on how much you're going to add. Okay, so I'm gonna add my pepper on there. And I have the broiler on. You know, the broiler is one of those things that I don't think we're using enough in our homes. You know, it's, every kitchen has one. Uh, they're in our, in our ovens, whether they be on the very bottom, underneath our oven, on that bottom drawer, or we find them on the top rack um, in the oven also. Um, it's a direct heat source, and it really calls for food uh, with a good amount of fat. You know, the food really tells you how it wants to be cooked. And no matter how much you may want to cook, you know, um, some stew meat into a stir fry, it's just not going to work. Uh, the stew meat's going to be tough, uh, and you're not going to have a su successful uh, stir fry. Well, same going into the broiler. If I put some chicken breast into the broiler without any fat on top of them, they're really going to dry out. Even if I put a little bit of olive oil, the broiler is a very direct heat source and will heat up very quickly. So what's going to work out really well is that we have our chicken thighs. The si thighs have the skin on them, and we've added some salt and pepper. Uh, some things you have to be very careful. You know, I like to work very close to the broiler, and working so close to the broiler, and being that we have some fatty skin, um, we get a lot of fat coming off of the chicken and could end up causing a fire. So we want to be really careful. You know, you always should have your fire extinguisher. Raise your hand if you know your fire extinguisher is. Um, I know where mine is. And God forbid there was something like that, we would be able to put the fire. You know, uh, and we all know uh, the one item we would not throw onto a fire or a grease fire is going to be water, okay? If there's a lot of oil splattering onto the tray, the tray's on fire when you open the oven door, you're not gonna run and take your seltzer or water and go ahead and throw that on, you're gonna get an explosion. My theory is if, if you're close enough to throw the water onto the fire, you're close enough to be in the flames. So what should we be doing? Uh, well, one, let's check out our, to our tomatillos. Everything's looking really nice. Uh, we can start to see the brown in a little bit. Um, some flour, some salt, um, the black pepper. I mean, take off the top of the black pepper and dump it on there. It's gonna smother the fire out. Um, things like this, water, uh, they're gonna spread it and you know, you're really gonna cause a really bad fire. Other items you could use. Pancake uh, mix. Uh, if you have, you know, a flour-based pancake mix, not not already mixed with the water in it, of course. But you know, we're talking about anything that's going to put the fire out. We don't want to throw a rag. We don't want to, um, you know, uh, try and put a lid like on a pot on the stove was on fire. Now you got to put your hand into the fire. So fire extinguishers are great. You know, I say have some salt, some flour, always around. I know I always have my salt cave, and if there was a fire, trust me. Um, I would uh, not hesitate to dump the salt onto my fire, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and get these into the, into the um, broiler. Now remember I said these are still in here a little frozen, okay? But I'm not gonna be worried about that. We're gonna get them nice and charred under the broiler. They're gonna go into a pan. I'm gonna pour the green sauce, salsa verde, over the top, cover it with tin foil, and it's gonna bake at 325 degrees for probably hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes, um, being that they're frozen. And when we get them, I, you know, the chicken has been so tender when it's been cooked from frozen, it's been unbelievable. Um, you know, these kind of things are, the more you do them, the more you're gonna find these things out. So I'm gonna go ahead, um, get this in my broiler. I have two ovens set right now. I have my small oven set for the chicken to go into the oven. And then I have my broiler set. Now I have my rack uh, set all the way to the top and the chicken's gonna be a little bit too big. So what are we gonna do? We have to go ahead and lower the rack. So I'm gonna take our rack out and go down one level. All right, so we have our chicken down one level and then we can still go into that top rack. I had been doing some, some salmon, uh, I guess, the other last week. 
and I had the salmon really, really close. It was definitely tippity tippity top. Um, and we weren't getting a lot of, of splattering coming off of that, so it worked out really well. Uh, so I had the chicken on, uh, the chicken's gonna broil, uh, really nice, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my tongs. Uh, if I can find some tongs, uh, I'm sure I have them around here somewhere. Um, and we're starting to see the tomatillos are starting to brown. Um, as you can see, that tomatillo, right, all that steam coming off of there, right, getting evaporation, which you miss, and, and looking really well. So I'm gonna move around my garlic and tomatoes. They're starting to take on some color. Uh, you can see my, my tomatoes are starting to blacken a little bit. Uh, the garlic is starting to uh, uh, blister and, and blacken a little bit, and that's great. I know I'm gonna have lots of flavor um, in this, and it's gonna come out no, really, really nice. I'm going to get some olive oil going with my shallots and tomatoes. I'm going to get that going on the back burner. I have a pot already set up, ready to go. And I'm going to get that on. I'm going to go with just a little bit of olive oil. And we're going to sweat those shallots and garlic. You know, remember, remember the, uh, the sweating technique, it developed the natural sugars in onions and in garlic. So what does that do? Well, it makes them taste better than if I were to just dump my shallots or dump my garlic, if it was in here, um, into a soup or a sauce or a stew. Um, even though they would eventually cook in there, uh, the sweating really helps to develop the natural sugars. Now, a couple things we don't want to do. We don't want to brown, right? No caramelization uh, during sweating. So I'm going to go ahead right now, and I'm going to go ahead and add in my, my shallots right in. I'm going to check on my, my chicken. Uh, make sure that my oven's not on fire. And oh, we're looking good. We're not on fire yet. Again, we're on the second um, to the top of the, um, the second rack from the top. And um, we're just looking for caramelization. We're not looking for the chicken to cook all the way through. We're not gonna flip the chicken over and try and cook the other side. That's not the purpose. We are not trying to cook the chicken under broiler. What are we trying to do? Again, we're trying to add caramelization. We're trying to add browning. Oh boy, and you hear my fire alarm going off. I'm gonna to have to open the windows and get the hood system on. Oh boy, I'm, I'm in big trouble. Um, excuse me while I open the window, just that little crack. All right, so we have our, our windows open. The alarm is still going off. My honey just came out of work and she's, she's blowing the smoke all over, uh, but it should end uh, pretty quickly. Um, you know what I say, if the smoke alarm is not going off, you're not developing flavor. And flavor <laughs> comes, uh, she laughs, right? Flavor comes from caramelization, flavor comes. So, I'm going to add our fire alarm stops, right? My boy Jack is coming down, thought the house was on fire. And we're going to flip over our tomatillos. Uh, not only do I want to get one side of the tomatillo, but I want to go after both sides of the tomatillo. I wanted that water evaporating from the back side and blistering that skin. And then I also wanted to get the evaporation. And I'm gonna move my garlic around. And then I'll bring the tray over in just a little while um, after I get them all flipped so you can actually see what's going on here. Um, in the pan with the olive oil, I can hear my shallots and tomatoes starting to cook. Um, and I say, you know, even my kids at school, when you hear it, when you see it, when you smell it, it's time to turn the pan down. Okay, um, especially when sweating. Uh, we don't want to burn any of our items. Um, so we want to keep those nice and, and tender. All right, I'm gonna bring my, my pan over uh, so you can see what's going on. Oh, it's not too hot, right? Yep. So we go ahead and grab that, right? And you can see we have our tomatillos, we have our garlic, and we have our tomatoes starting to blister very nicely. We're going to get those back on to the stove, okay? We're going to move these around right now and really, really want to have to take on uh, some, some really good color, okay? Uh, while this is going, also going to check our chicken. Now, I could have added some adobo to the chicken. I could have added some cumin. I could have added some paprika. I could have added all kinds of different items. I really want the flavor of the tomatillo, the garlic, and the tomato to come through. So I'm not going to add too many seasonings to this. So I'm going to keep this natural and keep the flavors very clean. You know, uh, people talk to me about what my favorite food is or favorite flavors. And time and time again, I'm saying that I like very clean flavors um, where things aren't masked. Uh, there's not much of an aftertaste. 
but wow, was it really delicious uh, while you were eating it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and check my chicken in the oven and see how that's doing. Uh, we can see a little smoke coming off our chicken, uh, which is great. I'm gonna turn my pan around. Start to see a little bit of caramelization, uh, but, but not a whole lot, not a whole lot, okay? Uh, going back to our, our items, I'm gonna turn the pan down now. You know, I had it very high early on, uh, and that was to get caramelization. Now what I want to do is I want to turn that flame down. Um, I don't want to rush the vegetables right now. I want them to evaporate moisture. I'm going to be replacing that moisture with chicken stock in just a little while. And if you can get rid of water and replace that with a better flavoring agent, uh, it's going to make for better food, okay? So again, we're going to move our pan around, moving our garlic, moving our tomatillos, and we're getting some some really nice flavors, some nice sour uh, flavors gonna come out of the tomatillos, uh, some nice, uh, you know, uh, flavors gonna come out of the garlic, and, you know, we're not cooking the garlic uh, necessarily all the way through, it's not chopped, so, you know, we still have some flavor coming from the inside of the garlic uh, that will give a little more tenderness to the dish, and then having a little bit more on the outside, okay? All right, so, we're just about ready to go into uh, the pot with our shallots and our tomatoes. Um, I'm keep an eye on this back here. Everything is looking really good. I could have some garlic in there. Um, you know, these are base dishes, and from here, any dish can be made. You know, you could add any kind of ingredients. You want a puree. If you wanted to braise some whole onions in with the chicken. Um, if you wanted to throw in leeks. Um, if you wanted to use uh, some diced peppers in this, you could be sweating some peppers right now, uh, and they would be great. Some green peppers uh, or some red peppers diced. Uh, would go into this really, really nice, okay? So, I'm um, gonna go ahead and start to get my sauce ready, right? So, I'm gonna turn my pan off at this point, okay? And again, I don't want it to get too burned. We, we don't want our, our final dish to taste burned. But what we, we want to do is get that balance uh, from the caramelization of the, of the tomatillos, the caramelization of the tomatoes, and of the garlic. So, it worked out really well. See how I'm grabbing? I use my tongs on the other side. Um, and we have a really nice dish right here, okay? So I'm gonna take my, my pan, I'm gonna bring this up to the front burner, make sure I turn off the back burner, and I'm gonna go ahead and add all of my tomatillos and tomatoes and garlic right in. I'm not measuring this. These are the amount of tomatillos that we had bought from the store. tomatoes that were left over in the refrigerator and some chicken stock that I have right here. I'm probably not going to use all the chicken stock because I am going to be pureeing this. Okay. All right. So we have that sauce going well. And again, I'm going to check on my chicken right now and make sure that's going well. Oh yeah, we're looking really good right here. We're starting to get some nice caramelization, some nice browning, and I want to start to get a pan ready. This sauce is gonna to come together uh, so quick, it's really gonna blow you away. We get a little bit of water here, you know, that, that restaurant show, 23,000 steps in two days. And boy, my feet are killing me and still home in time to make dinner for my, my family. Um, which, you know, I, I can't tell you how privileged I am to be able to do every day. Um, I have a wife that works so hard and, and does so much for our family, it enables me uh, to be able to be here. So um, shout out to my honey Robin. Uh, thank you for all you do. Uh, I love you with, with all my heart. Um, missed you the past two days. Couldn't wait to get home and see her. Um, didn't even sleep uh, very well last night knowing uh, she was right there next to me. So here's to you, honey. Ah, boy, was I parched. Okay, another tool we're gonna be using today is the immersion blender. Um, this is a wand that will fit right into your sauce and it's gonna help to make it puree. Right. So let me go ahead and grab that out. Uh, we, have a couple, we have a couple of these at the house. Uh, we have two of them. I use them to make smoothies. I'll use them to make soups. I'll use them, and again, to make sauces. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these around. And I have my flame on high, so I really don't want any caramelization. Everything's starting to come together really well. I'm going to add just enough chicken stock to cover the tomatillos and tomatoes. So how much am I going to use? I don't know. 
Um, as you can see, see how my chicken stock is falling out of, of the pan? Um, this chicken stock is, is really, really gelatinized, uh, which is really great. Um, you know, when you see that, that gelatin, uh, you know that you have a really good stock. So I'm gonna go ahead and move around my tomatillos and tomato. And we're picking up all that fond. You know, I talked about uh, deglazing, I've talked about fond in past episodes. What is deglazing? Deglazing is adding a liquid, whether it be chicken stock, alcohol, or water, and what it's done is supposed to clean the bottom of the pan. Right, on the bottom of the pan we have that fond, not the fonds, okay? But the fond, F-O-N-D-E, -E, and fond means melted, fondue, right, melted cheese. And so the fond of the garlic, fond of the tomatoes, fond of everything that's sticking to the bottom of that pan is flavor. Uh, learning how to control that pan is probably uh, one of the most difficult things to do. Um, don't let your pan smoke. Make sure that you are controlling your pan, controlling the flavors, and trust me, it's gonna reward you tenfold in the end, okay? So again, I'm scraping the bottom of my fond. I'm just gonna let this uh, come to a boil. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper right now into my, um, my sauce. I'm not eyeing it. Uh, be careful when you're going in with the black pepper over something like this. Um, it could really spill in and ruin your whole sauce, so I really don't recommend doing that. I'm going to go ahead and check on my, my chicken again and see how that's doing. All right. And wow. It's looking amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. You'll see some nice browning on top, right? We're starting to see some caramelization, right? And caramelization equals flavor. And I'm gonna stop right there with the chicken. The chicken is not cooked all the way through, right? Still raw on the bottom, and that's just fine. Um, because again, we're gonna be braising the chicken in our salsa verde in the oven, right? Braising technique. Braising is added to food to make it tender. Now, are we looking to make our chicken tender? Uh, a little bit, you know. The more muscle is used, the more uh, slower a long cooking process or a wet cooking uh, that it needs. So the chicken thigh is not terribly tender, but when you cook it in some liquid and you have that nice, slow cooking process, uh, the chicken is really soft. I'm not looking for the chicken to fall off the bone, okay? Uh, one of my pet peeves in life is that when people say, wow, that, you know, I, as soon as I touched the meat, it was falling off the bone, it was so tender. Well, if it was so tender, falling off the bone was probably overcooked. And you'll get a transference of flavor from your chicken into your sauce. And it doesn't make for as much as, as a, I guess, pleasurable experience or, 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 you know, nice, soft textures in your mouth. So uh, I like my chicken to be cooked to about 165, 170 degrees for the thighs. They may even go up to 180, which is going to be okay. But we don't want them sitting too long at that temperature. Uh, the chicken will really start to break down uh, pretty quick. Okay? So, my sauce is just about ready to come to a boil. I'm gonna move this area, because I really want you to get a good view um, when I'm putting my chicken in the pan um, and everything that I have set up and ready to go. All right, so, I have my immersion uh, blender. I'm gonna go ahead and get a roasting pan out. If I can find one, let's see if we can find a roasting pan today. Uh, I stopped using glass. You know, I had some glass pan in the oven last week and I was making some chicken. And I took the glass pan out of the oven and I put it onto the stove top and I guess those grates were really cold and the pan cracked. Thank God I was able to save the chicken. Um, it was only in big pieces. Um, but it really could have ruined our food. So as much as I know everybody loves their glass pans out there, I'm giving up the glass pans and, and uh, no longer going to be using them. Okay, so this is just coming to a boil, and I'm going to go ahead and take my chicken, and I'm going to be sliding this into the pan. Now remember, the chicken is contaminated, right? We, we all know the chicken still has salmonella. So any blood coming off of here, we want to be really careful with. Right, and we're gonna go right into our pan. Okay, we do see some juices coming off of there, and we're gonna spread those juices uh, on top as well. Okay, and those are gonna end up giving us lots of flavor. Remember, your tongs are contaminated. There is salmonella on these tongs, so 
we're going to put those down into the sink, make sure we're not going to contaminate the other area, and uh, you know, we really don't want anybody getting sick, okay? All right, next up, we're going to be pureeing our, our sauce. Right? Our sauce is just coming to a boil. Nice hard rolling boil. Okay? Remember a boil is when we really see those things coming together. And as you can see, a lot of steam coming off, okay? But we have our liquid down bottom, we have our veggies in there, and now we're going to be pureeing this. Okay, I'm gonna put a, a pot holder down, so I'm not gonna scorch my countertop. That way if it'll really kill me, I'll be in big trouble. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my, my, my blender going. What's great about, the, about this blender is that you work right inside the pot. And you're not trying to, um, let me move this over just a little bit for you so you can get a better view and seeing me, right? Keep Johnny Schwab. And we're gonna be putting our, our blender in. And what I wanna do is I wanna blend up all those tomatillos, the tomato, the garlic, and we're gonna make one final sauce. Take your time, and I'm actually coming in on, on top of each one. And if you're ready, those in. I really want to make sure I get a good distribution um, of my sauce. And when the sauce is done, I'm going to end up taking the sauce out of the pan and cooking it on the stovetop so I can reach my desired consistency. to be too thick. If this is too thick while in the oven, it's going to stick to the bottom of the pan, it's going to burn, and then you're not going to be able to get it off. But I tell you, the aroma is coming off of here. You know, again, the tomatillos uh, that have been toasted, the garlic, the tomatoes, uh, shallots that are in here. And I'm going to go ahead and pour this right over the top. Okay? Right over the top. Looking, looking really great. Uh, we're going to serve this over some rice. I have my tongs here. Um, I'm gonna make sure my chicken is in there well. You can even see an extra tomatillo um, hanging up on top. And we're gonna leave that just the way it is right there, right? I'm gonna go ahead and grab some tin foil. I don't want this to be too tight. You know, when this goes in the oven, I don't wanna add any caramelization, but I do wanna let some steam get out, okay? So normally I would tell you, put two pieces across and get a nice, uh, a nice tight seal, but for this one, I'm only going to grab it in the middle. Okay, I want to protect the chicken uh, from browning. Okay, but as it does come to a boil in the oven, right? We'll have our our oven set at 325 degrees, boiling point as at 212 degrees. We are going to get a little bit of steam that's going to come out the sides of our pan. Okay, so here we have we have our uh, broiled chicken broiled chicken thighs. Uh, we have a salsa verde. Toasted tomatillos, tomatoes, shallots, um, and toasted garlic. Uh, add a chicken stock to puree, and we're going to lay that over the top of our chicken. Bake this in the oven for about, what did I say before, an hour, 15, hour, and 20 minutes. Uh, I'm going to make some rice peel off. Uh, you can watch one of my previous episodes, I think it was episode three or four, uh, that we had talked about the rice peel off technique. right? And the rice peel off technique is that we saute our onions and garlic, and we're adding our rice to the onion and garlic raw so that uh, that rice can really cook into the onion and garlic and we can that rice can really absorb those flavors uh, we then add some chicken stock which i have extra today and then once the rice comes to a boil you should be simmering it for about 15 minutes on a very low flame okay now we have a request for what i am making today and we call her Aunt Lisa Daisy and our little our little dog Daisy that we have uh, a, an old friend uh, from high school uh, Lisa had given it to her uh, to us so we call her Aunt Lisa now I have her in my phone as Aunt Lisa and we want to talk a little bit about the dish again so what we did was we started out with about 10 or 12 tomatillos 
and we cut those in half, and we put those onto a plancha just to brown. No salt and pepper, no oil, and we really want to get those tomatillos charred. To that, I added about 10, plum, um, 10 cherry tomatoes and about 8 to 10 cloves of garlic. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to evaporate the moisture while adding some caramelization. To that, we added some chicken stock to make our sauce, and then we took our chicken thighs, seasoned them with salt and pepper, and only put them under the broiler. Again, we're not trying to cook the chicken all the way through. We go ahead and pour the salsa verde over the top of the chicken, and we're gonna bake this in the oven for about an hour and 15 minutes. And again, we're not doing this very tight. We do want a little bit of steam coming out. Uh, I'm gonna make some sauteed string beans tonight, some rice peel off, some chicken salsa verde, and I will make sure to post a picture tonight so you can see the final dish. And that's it. That's our dinner tonight. Uh, you know, from frozen chicken to the oven, uh, from vegetables from the refrigerator to a sauce, um, all within about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, so hopefully we didn't keep you too long today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I can't tell you how happy it makes me to make this show, um, to share my family's dinner with you every night. Um, and this is real cooking. Uh, this is happening in real time. Um, we're not faking any of it. This is not a TV show where you can't see things all the way through uh, or how to make them. Uh, we're starting from, you know, from, from start to, to finish uh, to going in the oven and, and nothing's being pre-made and, and switched out. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, another episode of Cooking with Chef Johnny Schwa and hopefully uh, we get to see you again. God bless you, everybody. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a great day.